But if there's a negative in here, this minus sign needs to stay glued to the 15. Hi, I'm Alan Perry. I'm an associate professor in the math department at UVU. We're going to talk today about factoring a trinomial. Now, you may have learned different ways to factor uh, in all of your different math classes. There's tons of different ways that work out there. What I want to show you today is something called the AC method. If you write down a general trinomial, it's usually written like this, where the A, B, and C are called coefficients, and they just stand for any kind of numbers. This is called the AC method because it's going to do something with the coefficient in front of the x squared and the coefficient at the end. So let's do this with an example. If I want to factor this trinomial here, 6x squared minus 13x minus 5, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an AC here by taking the product of the coefficient in front and the coefficient at the end, including their signs. So I'm going to start with 6 times negative 5, which produces negative 30. For a minute, we're not going to worry about the sign. We're just going to think about the number 30. What we need to do is we need to find a pair of factors that multiply to negative 30 but add to this middle number, the negative 13. So to start, we need factor pairs of the number 30. The best way to do this without having to guess is to actually do it by counting. We'll start with the number 1 and see if it's a factor. 1 is always a factor of a number, so we'll write 1 here, and then we'll also write its factor pair. Then we take a look at, num at the number 2. This is 2 is also a factor of this, so we'll put a 2 there, and the factor pair it has is 15, because 2 times 15 is 30. Keep going, we, add, we go to 3 next. It's also a factor, so we put 3 and its factor pair 10. We can take a look at 4, but 4 actually isn't a factor here. If you do 30 divided by 4, you don't get a whole number, so we'll skip 4 and we'll go to 5. 5 is a factor, and its factor pair is 6. Now, as soon as you get to a number that you already have written, so our next number here would be 6, but 6 is already on the board. As soon as you get to that number, you have every single possible pair of factors, and you don't need to go any further. Now, this is where the sign comes into play because these are the numbers that multiply to 30, but we need numbers that multiply to negative 30. What that means is that the two numbers that we're multiplying together have to have opposite signs so that the result is a negative number. If it were a positive, they'd have to have the same sign, either both positive or both negative. So that's gonna actually double the number of possible choices here because one's gonna have a positive and one's gonna have a negative in this case here. So we need to find the pair that adds up to negative 13, this middle number here. And if you take a look down, you might, you might run into trouble because you might think 10 and 13 would do it, 10 and 3 would do it to give you 13. But remember, only one gets to be negative here. And you need both of these guys to be negative to get this one. So the one that actually works is the 15 and 2 with the 15 getting the negative. So negative 15 plus 2 would equal negative 13. And that's the pair that you need. So this pair, again, is the pair that multiplies to negative 30 but adds to negative 13. Once we have that, factoring is actually pretty straightforward. What we're gonna do is we're gonna rewrite negative 13x in terms of these two numbers here. Like this, so you can see that I've got 2x minus 15x, that equals the negative 13x, so there's no change between that line and the next. What we're gonna do now is we're going to group the first two numbers together. And we want to group the second two numbers together. But if there's a negative in here, this minus sign needs to stay glued to the 15. So you have to remember what subtraction really means here, which is adding a negative number. So I'll replace this subtraction sign with adding a negative 15. And then group so that the negative stays with the number. In each of these groups, you're now going to look for what you can factor out as a greatest common factor. So in this case, you'd have 2x can come out. That would leave 6x squared divided by 2x gives you a 3x, and 2x divided by 2x gives you a 1. Over here, you can see that you can factor out a 5, but we also want to make sure that the signs of the first terms in the parentheses stay the same. Since this one's negative and this one's positive, we also want to pull out the negative here. 
So we'll pull out a negative 5. Negative 15x divided by negative 5 is 3x, and negative 5 divided by negative 5 is 1. At this point, something neat happens, because what's in parentheses is the same in both situations. As long as you pick these factors correctly, this will always happen. Even if you do them in the opposite order, it'll still happen. Once you see that you have the same parentheses here, those, parenth those, those things in parentheses can factor out from the whole thing, and you end up with 3x plus 1 times, well, if you take 3x plus 1 out of this one, you get 2x, and if you take 3x plus 1 from that one, you get minus 5, which is the factored form of this trinomial. So to summarize, the way you process this method is you take the first coefficient with the last coefficient, multiply them together. Ignore the sign for a minute and write down all the factor pairs of the number that you got. I think the easiest way to do that is to count. Once you have all the factor pairs, you keep track of the sign. If it's negative, you need these pairs to have opposite signs. If it's positive, you want the pairs to have the same sign. And you look from those new pairs that you have with the signs, and you're looking for the pair that adds to the middle coefficient, including its sign. So in this case, it was negative 13. Once you find the pair, you rewrite the middle term in terms of those two pairs, keeping the x's attached. And then you do what's called factoring by grouping, where we group them like this, and we pull out the greatest common factors until we get down to the fa factor form. I hope that was helpful for you in, in figuring out how to factor a trinomial.